A sudden spike in anti-Semitic terrorist kinds of attacks in the Northeast has the Jewish community on edge all across the country. And in metro Atlanta, there has been a dramatic call for Jewish unity and solidarity. 11 Lives Bill Liss and photojournalist Charles Holmes met with two of Atlanta's leading religious leaders for some deeper insight into what lies ahead. For more than 110,000 Jewish residents in metro Atlanta, the reality of shootings at a Pittsburgh synagogue, attacks inside a Jewish store in Jersey City, and stabbings inside a private home in Muncie, New York. Do you feel bad at all? Where the Jewish holiday of Hanukkah was being celebrated was shocking. I think that the timing of our service this year is going to be remarkable. Chief Rabbi Peter Berg of Atlanta's largest synagogue, the Temple, was concise. We can't let a few people who hate, we can't let uh, terrorists uh, control the day. <laughs> And it wasn't long before the Atlanta Jewish community organized a major rally in Sandy Springs to show solidarity and a determined resolve to express their faith. For many Jewish people in Metro Atlanta, anti-Semitic acts are an abstract thought, but in fact, it's an Atlanta reality. Jaron Lino is a senior at Riverwood High School. I have experienced anti-Semitism myself in school and Anywhere I've gone, I've experienced it. Rabbi Berg says many Jewish students have been continually singled out with religious slurs. There's hardly a school in the metro area that our students go to that I have not been to this year to meet with the principals or the teachers to talk about kids from our congregation and community. It's an issue, says Rabbi Berg, that requires everyone in the community taking a positive role. We have many partners in the community. Um, we do so much work, for example, with the African-American community, and there's such racism that's prominent as well. So we support each other, and uh, we, we stand up and say hatred, all hatred, is terrible. It's an effort strongly supported by the Reverend Raphael Warnock, pastor of Atlanta's historic Ebenezer Baptist Church. Whenever bigotry rears its ugly head, whether it's in a synagogue or a church, whether it is a religious bigotry uh, or racism or any form of xenophobia, I think we have to recognize the ways in which none of us are safe. And we have to stand up uh, and speak on behalf of whoever, whomever uh, is on the receiving end uh, of that bigotry. And on Friday night, a significant number of Atlantas will speak out. Two of Atlanta's largest religious congregations, Jewish and Baptist, joining together here at the temple over the MLK weekend to show solidarity against racial and religious intolerance and to continue a dialogue to end the cycle of bigotry. It's a yearly event that brings together the temple community with the Ebenezer Baptist Church community in joint prayer, solidarity, and commitment. Uh, you're going to see a rabbi and a minister stand up together to say that all forms of hatred, racism, homophobia, xenophobia, bigotry, anti-Semitism, all are unacceptable, and we will not stand idly by. Every time we get together, the temple and Ebenezer Baptist Church, it is its own act of living resistance against racism and anti-Semitism. And I think that service empowers, inspires, and encourages a lot of people uh, to keep on keeping on. It certainly inspires me. Bill, it's so good to see this. I'm curious what's being done to bring unity in the greater Atlanta community beyond Ebenezer and the temple. Well, the rabbi, for one thing, has been speaking at the mosques. It happened earlier this year when there was an incident with a Muslim shooting somewhere else in the country. And Reverend Warnock has told me the same thing. He often gets together with the church and with the Muslim community and talks to them. So there's a great unity going on between the Jewish community, the African-American community, and the Muslim mm -hmm. community to promote, as you just said, that feeling of great unity within Atlanta. And this joint service tomorrow night, everyone has a chance to be a part of it. Absolutely. The wonderful part about that, folks, we are going to be streaming that service on our 11 Alive website tomorrow night. It will be live, starts at 8 o'clock at the Temple. It will also be available if you have a, an app on your phone, you'll be able to watch the whole thing. So all kinds of people can be able to watch it, and we think it will be community-wide. Perfect. Billis, thank you so much. Okay.